Thank you for joining me for an important conversation to provide a clear picture of the state of our city. We have several exciting announcements to share as we set out to achieve some of our most ambitious goals for the future of this great city. While I'd hoped to be back in the council chambers for this year's State of the City address with you, the community and local dignitaries, we continue to take all necessary precautions as we strive to make a full return to safe COVID levels. Until then, I'm happy to be speaking with you from my office in City Hall, where for the past eight years, I've come to work every day to fight for our community. To start, I wanna thank the Jersey City Council members who are our partners in everything we do, as well as fellow members of my administration and our more than 3,000 city employees. The work we've accomplished, especially this past year, is the reason Jersey City continues to lead other municipalities in so many critical areas. We are a community of action. Most importantly, I'd like to thank the residents. Every step we take together is a step towards building a community that is not only strong in numbers, but also in unity. I'm extremely grateful for each and every resident, every business owner and community partner. Your perseverance and commitment to continued progress have never wavered. Action ignites momentum, and we've kept our foot on the gas to accelerate our progress as a city, despite the many roadblocks thrown in our path. One of our greatest accomplishments this past year is that we were able to deliver a tax cut to all of our residents, families, and business owners facing unexpected financial difficulties of their own. Every day I speak to residents about their struggles as they're out of work or experiencing loss of income. That's why we worked proactively to find ways to restructure the city's budget so that we could help alleviate those financial burdens that so many households are still facing. I'm incredibly proud of the work we've done since I took office, especially in the area of fiscal responsibility, where we've crafted budgets that have avoided tax increases for five years, capped off with this year's tax decrease. We did this despite the extremely volatile state of the economy. Looking ahead, I'm pleased to announce this year we'll be launching a participatory budgeting pilot program to directly involve residents in the city's spending decisions. We want you, the residents, to tell us which community projects you want to see funded. Our team will then convert the community-driven ideas into concrete proposals with a defined scope, timeline, and cost. We're committed to making the municipal budgeting process more accessible and transparent for increased public engagement and community collaborations on meaningful infrastructure projects. I think we all can agree that this pandemic has opened our eyes to the importance of open space more so than ever before. Around the state, it has underscored the critical need for parks and outdoor recreational spaces. Parks are no longer a luxury, but rather they've become a necessity, especially in urban areas like Jersey City. That's why I'm pleased to announce the launch of a new year-long initiative in 2022 called the Year of Open Space. The goal is to reimagine existing public spaces for a post-pandemic world and create more innovative, non-traditional public spaces throughout the city, such as pocket parks, pedestrian malls, plazas, and other outdoor areas. Investing in parks and open space is my personal priority because the return on these investments is invaluable. Access to open space improves residents' mental and physical health, it improves property values, it improves environmental impacts, increases community engagements, and other intangible benefits. This interdepartmental initiative builds upon the recently updated open space element of Jersey City's master plan. Fortunately, we are already several steps ahead of most municipalities in this area. Throughout my tenure, we've completed major park improvement projects across all six wards utilizing grant funding. As the first in the state to implement an open space trust fund, in the past two years alone, we used your feedback to allocate nearly $3 million for widespread park upgrades. In fact, this past year, we broke ground on the much needed renovations at the historic Reservoir 3 site to preserve the local treasure and create safe public access to the 14 acre site. It had been talked about for more than 30 years without any progress until we joined this neighborhood residents and advocated to plan and fund the preservation project. We're not only making meaningful improvements in existing parks, but we're also creating brand new parks in targeted areas, including Oak Street Park, Fairmount Triangle Park, and several others already underway or completed. We're investing $10 million to create Skyway Park on our west side, transforming a 35 year old toxic Superfund site into 30 acres of park space with a COVID tree grove memorial along the Hackensack River waterfront. This past summer, we built and opened the award-winning Mary McLeod Bethune Park in Bergen Lafayette with a nine-foot bronze statue honoring the civil rights leader. This is the first statue in Jersey City to honor an African-American woman. 
The park has quickly become a valued extension of the Bethune Community Center located across the street. And now, the extension allows for more outdoor community-centric programming. Elsewhere in the city, the recent transformation of vacant land into Coles Park is part of our approach to developers, which mandates community givebacks at zero taxpayer expense while also benefiting the surrounding community. We are the first administration in decades to build brand new parks and public schools at no cost to Jersey City residents. Developers have become well aware that in Jersey City, we demand the surrounding community share in the benefit, and that's what's happening. We've become a national model for smart growth by leveraging development and the private sector to incorporate key community benefits, such as the construction of brand new public schools to alleviate the school system's overcrowding and long wait lists while providing top quality educational opportunities for our youth. We're also looking to other innovative partnerships as a way to reimagine our public school education. Just a few months ago, we broke ground on SciTech City. The event signified much more than just shovels in the ground. It ignited a groundbreaking shift to the way we approach public education and create real career launching opportunities for our local youth. Today, construction is underway at the 30 acre site, delivering what we set out to do with a one of a kind campus, bringing together scientists, community leaders, teachers, students, innovators, and entrepreneurs in a unique setting that will become a sought after destination for inspiration and innovation. Liberty Science Center High School will be a centerpiece of Tysec City, with Phase 1 scheduled to open by 2024. We're in the midst of an incredible transformation as we further establish Jersey City as the epicenter for STEM education and innovation, attracting world-class companies, jobs, investment, and countless other opportunities in a variety of areas. Unlike other municipalities, we refuse to let this pandemic paralyze our progress. As a result, we've made historic advancements on nearly every front. While demands for wide-ranging city services and resources reached never-before-seen levels, we rose to the challenge to meet residents' growing needs and build for a post-pandemic future. In fact, we've been working on a major initiative for the past several years in partnership with the World Economic Forum as Jersey City is a designated healthy city along with Mumbai and Amsterdam. I'm excited to announce a multifaceted technology-based health initiative to make measurable long-term impacts on improving the overall health of our Jersey City community. Our belief is the more tools we provide to improve healthcare access, the more we can help residents take responsible actions to live longer and healthier lives. Once again, we're raising the bar with innovative solutions to combat systemic issues that disproportionately affect urban areas. And I have no doubt that the programs we're pursuing today will change people's lives in Jersey City and serve as a model for other cities around the world to follow. One example of the important work underway is the first municipal aero farms we installed in Curry's Woods this past year, where Health and Human Services Director Stacy Flanagan further demonstrates the necessary steps we're taking today to prepare for a better tomorrow. I'm Stacy Flanagan, the Director of Health and Human Services for the City of Jersey City. Over the past year, we've seen our COVID cases rise and fall. Um, we're now at a really great place and continuing some of the work we've done over the last year, like expanded homeless services in the community, utilizing our health bus, which provides mobile showers, laundry services, and support with mental health, driving more food to our senior community, impacting support for our immigrants and our Afghani and Haitian refugee families, providing additional tools community by community, ward by ward with health educators, increasing health education in the community and trying to move an uptake in vaccines. We've been working towards additional ways to drive healthy food into low-income neighborhoods like our Aero Farms program in the backdrop. We are here at Curry's Woods, uh, one of our prime locations, the first location across the city. And we have nearly 30 members right now expanding hopefully by March to 50 and having a unique program here with our partners of Boys and Girls Club and Head Start along with the Jersey City Housing Authority to really make change in our community and build a healthier Jersey City. Aero Farms is a unique program that has 10 farms uh, across the city. So we started here at the Jersey City Housing Authority. We've built out at Marion Gardens. Our next stop is the Bethune Center. We also provide a lunch program for our seniors in 10 locations across the city. And we hope to expand that reach with additional greens from our Aero Farms. 
we understand that you know every neighborhood has uh, increased homelessness due to increased issues of job loss and economic insecurity over the course of this COVID crisis. And so we've expanded our program to add additional outreach workers uh, that have been trained across the city with other partners to get into you know, additional housing services or job training services, mental health services, addiction services. Uh, and really this is important so that we can, you know, get people in the right places to get the kind of help they need for their future. At the Jersey City Department of Health and Human Services, we practice a vision of health in all policies. So that the health department is at the table, whether it's violence prevention, homelessness services, senior affairs, immigrant affairs, veteran affairs, and the like. We believe that there should be a healthier vision that can be incorporated into any work being done. And the primary place where we see that is in a trauma-formed community uh, working together so that there's comprehensive support, so there's no wrong door of entry, and that and everywhere you go in our community, you'll find someone that can help you out. I'm proud to lead an incredible team who have gone above and beyond to ensure our residents have the testing, vaccines, and various other services that have proved critical and even life-saving over the past two years. Your health and your safety are paramount, and since day one of my tenure, my commitment to improving public health has never wavered. I've made public safety a top priority, expanding and enhancing the police department with more officers in targeted areas, establishing fixed posts in strategic locations, improving technology to safeguard both residents and the officers, all that among countless other initiatives, all with the goal of improving your safety. Since 2013, we've hired over 700 police officers to fill each of the four districts, lifting the police department from dangerously low staffing levels inherited from previous administrations to over 900 officers citywide today. The recent officer hirings have helped increase police presence and therefore deterrence, detection and solving of crimes, fostering active relationships between police and the community, its open lines of communication, and most importantly, we recognize citizens as a crucial partner in combating crime. As a direct result of our diversity recruitment efforts, nearly 75% of those officers hired represent minority populations. I'm incredibly proud of Jersey City's diversity, and early on, I recognized the need for a more diversified police force. In fact, one year ago, I appointed the first African-American female citizen to oversee the Jersey City Police Department. Police Director Tawana Moody has been tasked with improving accountability, transparency, and community relations. And in just one year, she has already established tangible improvements department-wide. Hi, my name is Tawana Moody. I'm the Police Director of the Jersey City Police Department, and we're here today at Centralized Booking. With Centralized Booking is something they've been trying to get together for years. Here at the Police Department, where it cuts down the amount of arrest time, the liability of escape, a liability and danger to the officer as well as the person that's in custody. And now it is like a one-stop shop. You come to centralized booking, we book them, we process them, and then we get our cops to return to the street to be able to assist for anything else that's out there for the residents. I just want to share a little bit about what we have done in the community. We had this summer rocking with the seniors. The sworn officers, as well as our chaplain program, went into every district of the community and we played games with them, we fed them, we spent time with them because here at the police department we want to know, help the community know that we are not just out there to do arrests, we are out there to make sure everybody is good and that police officers are human beings just like everyone else. And with me being the first civilian um, to run such department, I have the benefit of doing ministry here in the community as well as running the sworn officers in the community. So what better way is to bring it all together? Also our training unit that we have set up in place as of February of last year. Our training unit is where we put our field training officers along with the new sworn officers so that we can train them the Jersey City way to know how to deal with the community here. We're able to put more officers on the street corners, which definitely helps with the community, put them into the parks. 
we are launching our force unit that we're trying to get that up and running. The key to all of what I'm trying to get done in this position that I hold is to make sure that the community is safe and the offices are safe and we're doing things right and in a shorter amount of time. I also want to be able to share with you guys today of how we have a CCTV cameras. We do them in phases. We try to put them in as much as possible into the community because it helps the community to feel safer as well as give the officers what they need. Now every officer here in Jersey City is assigned a body-worn camera. At first it was a problem. The officers thought that it was an issue. They have now learned that that's their best friend, that they have to turn it on. It's for the safety of them as well as the person that's having an involvement and we have more to come of things that we're going to focus on so we love to hear from the community as well as the officers just so that we can help to understand what makes this a better place for us to continue to bridge the gap here in Jersey City. Our emergency response times are amongst the best in the state. In 2021 our fire department responded to over 16,000 calls for emergency service. During my tenure, we've brought the fire department up to adequate staffing levels in order to meet our residents' needs. We've used federal grants to create special training programs to help fight fires safely and more efficiently, especially in high-rise buildings. To complement our efforts, we recently added a special fire engine that can pump water to the top of the highest buildings here in Jersey City. We've also expanded fire services beyond emergency response and have doubled proactive fire safety and prevention efforts. As a result, we've seen significant reductions in the number of large fires citywide. You and your family safety will always be of the utmost importance, and we will continue to identify how and where we can improve your safety. We were the first in the state to adopt Vision Zero to eliminate traffic fatalities and severe injuries on city roadways by the year 2026. In just three years, we've built a robust program with multiple initiatives such as redesigning streets for safety, installing traffic calming and traffic control devices like speed humps and stop signs, all while investing in alternate modes of transit. We've constructed 12 miles of protected bike lanes to date, with another seven miles scheduled for 2022. This year, we'll extend the existing bike lane network into other neighborhoods, including the Heights, Bergen Lafayette, and provide a better connection into Greenville. Via Jersey City has proven effective in achieving exactly what we set out to do, to connect two transit deserts in the north and south areas of our city by creating greater connectivity for residents to jobs, education, healthcare, and more. As opportunity gaps widen throughout the country, here in Jersey City, we've been working diligently over the past eight years to close these gaps that disproportionately affect urban areas and minority populations most by expanding access to critical services and resources for all of our diverse residents. In September, we started construction on a new 60,000 square foot homeless services facility located along Grove Street, utilizing St. Lucie's established success as the foundation to build a brighter, more prosperous future for those in need. This dynamic, human-centered project includes affordable housing solutions and support services for individuals and families who are homeless. Additionally, the city's first ever inclusionary zoning ordinance mandates affordable housing and expands access for our neediest residents. We did this by working with community partners and our Department of Housing, Economic Development and Commerce, led by Director Anicia Cialone. Hi, I'm Anicia Cialone, the Director of Housing, Economic Development and Commerce. We undertook the long overdue update of our master plan, including the land use plan, the open space, recreation, and community facilities plan. Thanks to your input, we have a strong vision for the future. Some of the recommendations included citywide sustainability, promoting diversified economy, prioritizing socially vulnerable communities, and establishing 15-minute neighborhoods by strengthening access to essential services within a neighborhood cores, among others. The master plan was recently adopted. However, this is just the beginning. We are starting to work with communities throughout the city to roll out the recommendations. We recently revised our inclusionary zoning ordinance and it was adopted by city council. The ordinance requires affordable housing in the amount of 10 to 15% of total units within new construction citywide that is receiving the benefits of either additional units or square footage. The ordinance uses best practices of creating mixed income developments throughout the city. We've worked to attract investment and development away from the waterfront. 
That includes Bayfront, where we are in the early phases of building out the infrastructure that includes water, sewer, and streets. All of that sets the stage for the first phase of buildings that we anticipate to begin construction next year. We continue to see a lot of interest and development in Journal Square, where we're bringing back the business district to its former glory as an economic engine for the city. We also have many other projects underway throughout the city, and we look forward to continuing to work with you, our residents and community partners. Today, we continue to build on the promise I made to you eight years ago when I first took office, and that was to attract interest and development away from the waterfront and help realize Jersey City's full potential in each of our neighborhoods. Our investments are already paying off. For those of us who call Jersey City home, the revival of Journal Square to its former glory as a business, arts, and shopping hub is already noticeable, and the monumental work we're doing now will be remembered fondly as a historic turning point for our city. In June, our central Pompidou announcement reached over 1 billion people worldwide, putting Jersey City and New Jersey on the global stage with a spotlight on our success as we redefine the arts and culture landscape. Jersey City will host highlights of Europe's largest art collection and will provide unprecedented exposure to its arts and culture of Jersey City school children and residents. Just think, we will soon be able to engage with historic masterpieces right here in our hometown. The restoration of the iconic Lowe's Theater is also an integral part of our long-term vision to stimulate economic vitality in the city and enhance quality of life. Construction is underway to maximize the historic landmark's potential with major infrastructure improvements. Lowe's will return as the premier theater venue of this size in the area and will compete with New York City venues, attracting big talent and regional audiences while also setting the stage for aspiring local performers. Jersey City is home to an unparalleled arts community, and after years of fighting for critical funding, we've reached a major milestone with the first in a series of grants to support artists, art organizations, and educational programming. One year after you voted in overwhelming support to implement the state's first municipal arts and culture trust fund, we are now accepting applications for nearly $1 million in grants to provide meaningful support to help local artists throughout Jersey City grow and thrive. Jersey City's Arts and Culture Trust Fund quadruples the amount of funding that all of Hudson County receives in total from the state every year. We're taking it a step further by requiring all grant recipients to provide free public benefits through art with meaningful improvements to ensure all residents can participate in the arts, especially our impressionable youth. We are placing emphasis on ensuring our community has the appropriate resources in place for all of our youth throughout Jersey City. As a result, the restructuring of the Department of Recreation to incorporate and enhance youth development has been a success in expanding enrichment opportunities as well as addressing our youngest residents' mental and physical health at a relatively vulnerable time. The increased engagement we've seen speaks for itself. Let's head over to Pershing Field Pool where the retractable roof is operational and already enticing more residents to dive in. Hello, I'm Lucinda McLaughlin, Director of the Jersey City Department of Recreation and Youth Development. I'm pleased to share with you some of the things that we've been doing uh, across the city when it comes to engaging youth. Uh, for 2021, we had historic numbers when it came to engagement in enrichment and athletic activities all across the city. We've taken great strides improving our facilities to better meet the needs of the community, which is a really exciting opportunity for our youth and our citizens overall. In terms of just last summer, 2021, we had almost 8,000 youth engaged in safe and healthy programming, whether because we hired them as staff and trained them appropriately as staff or because they were youth participating in our many programs at the pools, at our hockey rinks, at our on our fields. The staff rose to meet the challenges presented by COVID in 2020 and 2021 by actually increasing our programming and opportunities for youth to engage in safe outdoor ways with trained staff masked up and ready to play. We met these youth on the fields all across the city every day. We had basketball, soccer, boxing, track, you name it, we were running it. And our programs were filled with youth getting up, getting moving, getting away from their screens and enjoying the city. We were able to introduce a brand new program called Bucket Drumming. So we increased the programs and opportunities to make sure that we were providing a space for everyone who wanted to be included. We've also delivered on Mayor Phillips' intention to increase our engagement with youth and special needs across the city. We started off in the end of 2020 with our all-in program and expanded this past summer to include kayaking and hiking programs for our youth with special needs. 
when it comes to our facilities, there's a few projects that have been stalled for a long time across the city, such as a retractable roof at Pershing, a pool that hadn't operated in 20 years, uh, which is up and running and looks beautiful in the facility, has really enhanced how we can safely enjoy the facility. We're making improvements to our hockey rink as well, including a new floor, so that it looks better and feels better for people who are engaging there. Our athletic fields, we have improved the way that we permit those spaces to, and increased our focus on equitable access to those facilities as well. We've also improved how we engage with other departments across the city. We've had partnerships with Health and Human Services and uh, assisted in some of the food service needs over the past few years. We've partnered with uh, parks to improve what our parks look like and improve what our athletic facilities and how they are delivering and meeting the needs of the athletes that use them. And our athletes are young, they are old, they are everywhere in the middle, and we are now providing better facilities for their use. As a department and as a city, we are also more prominent now uh, across the state through the New Jersey Parks and Recreation Association and across the country, active in the Urban Leaders Group of the National Recreation and Parks Association. Under Mayor Phillips' vision, we will continue as 2022 and beyond, we will continue to improve the look and feel and welcoming nature of our parks as we, as recreation, welcome parks into our department. That will allow us to uh, continue to improve the look, the feel of our facilities, which again, provides better, safer opportunities for everyone who uses our public spaces in Jersey City, not only to actively recreate in a sports capacity, but for any leisure activity that you can think of. Research confirms a safe and stable home environment best supports children's needs for positive development. That's why our housing authority plays a key role in our overall efforts to enhance quality of life and expand opportunities for all. At our housing sites, we're not just providing shelter. We recognized early on the need to address gaps in healthy food access, digital divides, and the many other factors that impact our most vulnerable families. In 2021, we made transformative steps to expand the broad range of resident services with a particular focus on youth, workforce development, senior, and digital inclusion initiatives, as our director of the Housing Authority explains here. At the Jersey City Housing Authority, we think about our work as affordable housing plus, and the plus is community services and community empowerment. One of the things that the pandemic taught us is that we had to think about different ways to deliver services with our partners. Our services include partnerships with over two dozen organizations, from the Boys and Girls Club, which delivers after-school programming to students across our sites, and we have a really strong partnership with the Department of Health and Human Services, from providing summer meals to senior congregate meals at many of our sites. And this year, we welcome two arrow farms, one at Marion Gardens and another here at Curry's Woods. Here at Curry's Woods, the Arrow Farm Garden complements a resident-run food pantry that has been successful and effective. We also have many partnerships with local community organizations at the Jersey City Housing Authority. And we've entered into these partnerships to provide more services and resources to our residents. We have Head Start, which provides early childhood for so many residents across our system. We also welcome two new arrow farms this year, which provide healthy greens to residents of both Marion Gardens and Curry's Woods. And we're really happy to announce that Women Rising has received a federal grant to provide direct services at Booker T. Washington starting this spring. We're really pleased to announce that in 2022, all of our public housing sites will have access to high-speed internet and that it's going to be free as the result of a federal subsidy. So we're really pleased that we're able to deliver this important resource to our residents. This means that young people are going to be able to study and learn and do all of the things they wanna do online. It will mean that isolated seniors will have greater access to see their families and to participate in telehealth. It means that anyone who's interested in becoming engaged with any sort of program or becoming civically engaged or involved can do so um, using internet access. So this for us has been a major accomplishment. All of the work we're doing has one common goal, to improve quality of life and increase opportunities for all Jersey City residents. In some cases, you'll see the physical improvements as these visions of the future come to life. But it's important to also know about the infrastructure improvements that are necessary and affect your daily lives, but are much less visible. 
When I came into office in 2013, I committed to developing green initiatives to reduce our carbon footprint to combat climate change and improve our air quality, improve our overall health, and improve quality of life for all of our residents. We adopted the Jersey City Resiliency Master Plan and have since implemented innovative solutions to various challenges that urban areas like us often face to improve the health and safety of our residents and community. From acquiring green infrastructure and new developments, to signing an executive order for a fully electric municipal fleet, to installing solar panels and charging stations, to new underground sewer infrastructure, eliminating buildup and pollution from our local waterways, and many other stormwater absorption strategies. As a leader in transportation electrification, we will become the first municipality on the entire East Coast to deploy electric garbage trucks in the coming months, replacing our worst polluting vehicles with clean energy. Last year, we took our efforts to the next level by adopting Jersey City's first energy savings improvement plan to reduce operational costs, improve energy resiliency, and leverage energy savings. The plan saves taxpayers $21 million in energy and operational costs over 20 years while funding over $19 million in urgent capital needs. Our efforts to create a clean and efficient energy infrastructure will not only create jobs and save taxpayer dollars, but they will also cut our greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by 2030. Jersey City continues to set the bar high for implementing creative solutions to the deep-rooted challenges that cities like us often face. When I gave this speech in 2019, I could never have imagined the unprecedented obstacles that lie just ahead. While the past two years have been extremely difficult for all of us, I'm humbled by the way our community has come together to make Jersey City stronger than ever. We didn't just survive, we thrived. I'm incredibly proud of our ability to serve the residents of this great city despite the odds working against us, all while meeting and surpassing our goals for the city. This in itself is truly outstanding. We've worked to not only meet each extraordinary challenge head on, but we've implemented solutions that continue to make our city a more resilient and more united place to live, to work, and to play. We could never have done this without you, and for that, I'm sincerely grateful. I look forward to continued partnerships as we keep moving our great city forward. Thank you.